All right. Now, I have to say that that segment that we just did, I actually found because of this next segment. Okay. And this segment actually makes me happy. And it's very rare when I would say that new, more laws are a good thing. I think that there's a lot of laws out there that are kind of just Silly. too much. Okay. Yeah. So, but in this instance, I'm very happy because there is actually a new Florida law that targets surgeons good. They do need more laws that do there. Brazilian butt lifts, <laughs> which is wild to me that they specifically pointed to Brazilian butt lift and liposuction surgeons. Yeah, it Isn't sounds like they keep messing stuff up over there. Yep, you guys know. You guys know exactly what I'm gonna say. So we've talked about the issues uh, with some of the plastic surgery in Florida. Yeah, um, I do think that the laws there are pretty loose, uh, and uh, unfortunately, when we talk about bad outcomes, and I always say, Sarah, where this happened, her answer is always Florida, and she's not always <laughs> right, but she that's is right a lot. My, of, she is right a lot of times. That's my I, standard answer now. I do think that you know that is because some of the laws there are pretty pretty loose. Is it like, I just wonder, is, like, is it just because people are so desperate for plastic surgery there? It's like that, that, uh, the vibe there is You like... get a lot of people traveling to Florida. Um, I think because yeah. the laws are loose, it lets people cut corners and the costs are cheaper. Mm -hmm. And so, because why in the world would someone... Because out of desperation for, to look different, I guess. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but you know, when you think about it, like why would you fly somewhere else to get surgery if you could have it yeah, for the, the same cost. price where you live? Like and that's- pay to fly somewhere Like too. that's silly, no one would do that. So I think that, you know, there's offering cheap plastic surgery. So how do they do that? Well, cut corners because there's not, not as much not regulation. Not have malpractice insurance. Yeah, some of them don't have malpractice <laughs> insurance as we learned in the last segment. So, you know, we've talked about Brazilian butt lifts on the show, I think countless times. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. I'm just say, I don't like Brazilian butt lifts. I don't think they're good surgeries. Mm -hmm. The mortality rate is 1000 times higher than the average plastic surgery. I also have concerns with like the long-term issues such as fat reabsorption and asymmetry and fat hardening. So when I saw that there was a, a law that, that targets this, I'm like, oh, okay, this might be a good thing we're gonna talk about. So the new law is HB 1561. Uh, I think I have an- uh, That sounds like a virus. An article, <laughs> yeah, if you guys wanna look this up, this is the article that I was reading um, just from a few days ago. Uh, it talks about law HB 1561. It was signed into law, I think a few weeks ago, not just last week, but in the past month. And it aims to reduce the potential risks of plastic surgeons, specifically that do liposuction and Brazilian butt lifts. So it has key points here which are actually pretty good. Like they actually got this one right. So mandatory registration. Doctors removing a thousand cc's of fat, even if it's being re-injected into the body, must register their offices with the Florida Department of Health. That's a good thing. I mean, yeah. to start, at least they know who's doing these things. Now, what I thought was crazy about this is the part where I said, even if injected, because in the past, if you're removing more than a thousand cc's of fat, and throwing it away, you had to register your office. But if you're putting it back in the patient, they considered that not to be a reason to register. Because do you have to dispose of it a certain way or something? Yeah, you have yeah. to have, if there's, med, there's medical hazard. I mean, yeah. that's not a big thing. But what it basically did is allowed people doing BBLs to skirt past this regulation. Yeah. Because they were saying, well, I'm not taking a thousand out and throwing it away, I'm putting a thousand back in, mm -hmm. so I don't have to register. But yeah. now they, they basically closed that loophole. So now there's a mandatory registration for people that are doing Brazilian butt lifts because almost all, I'd say 100% of Brazilian butt lifts are gonna take 1,000 cc's so like, or more. So like the more fat you take out of somebody, like the higher risk oh, absolutely. that they yeah. can get there's hurt a limit. or death or something? Yeah, absolutely. So the limit, the, the kind of hard limit that people always talk about is 5,000 cc's. If you take Dang. out more than 5,000 cc's of fat, what which is-, is What does that look like? If you... So it's five liters. So uh, let's see, what's a gallon? A gallon's like three and a half liters, I guess. I don't know math. <laughs> so, I mean, imagine a gallon jug. Yeah. It's going to be more than that. Like a gallon jug plus another third, roughly. Okay. So it's a so lot. So it's like a little over a gallon of fat. Yeah. Because okay. uh, let's see, what's a gallon? Charles, isn't a gallon like three and a half liters? Um, I was an English uh, <laughs> expert, not necessarily. A... I'm pretty sure a gallon is like <laughs> three and a half or 3.6 liters. Uh, man, I, if I like sit here and try to convert yeah, my head, uh, I'm just going to uh, embarrass myself. Let's go with it. All right. So like, well, 16, <laughs> so 12 ounces is 360, 350 milliliters. So 36 ounces is a liter. Uh, so 
uh, five liters would be 180 ounces, and a gallon's 128. So I'm actually pretty close. Okay. That was pretty impressive. I think I'm pretty close on those numbers. Somebody can hey. check. I'm sure the internet will check me and tell me <laughs> I'm wrong. But anyway, it's a lot. And, yeah. And that's a, and, and and so as someone who does a lot of liposuction, I. I don't think I've ever come close to taking out five liters. Like to me, a lot's like two liters. If I take out two liters, I mean, that's to me, that's a lot of fat to take out at once. Because what happens is, is when you start doing that much liposuction, like your risks go up. Like not only the risk of complications, but the risk of, of like cardiovascular issues from having such big, huge fluid shifts really? and fluid changes. Yeah. So your risk dramatically goes up. So that most people say five liters, that's the top. Um, how do we get off on that? Oh, we were talking about the thousand. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, anytime someone gets a BBL, they're going to take out more than a thousand for sure because they're going to inject it back in. If they're doing it right, they're purifying it, which means they're going to get less. So you need to pull it. That's it's one of my big problems with BBLs. Like in order to do BBL correctly, you have to take out a ton of fat because you got to process it, and it gives you like a third of what you pulled out. Because I just I've done I did a couple of fat craftings in the past um, couple of weeks. They're both breasts, so it's much smaller. But uh, yeah, when you pull out, say, you know, 500 cc's of fat, you're only gonna get back 150, 160 if you if you process it right. I have a system for doing it. Uh, it's like it actually like a, a product. Like it's a, mm -hmm. it's called Revolve. It's like a fat crafting. It mm -hmm. pulls the fat in there, it cleans it, spins it. The yeah. fat that comes out of it's beautiful though. Like it's not like chunky. It's just pure. And so it, it has better absorption. I wouldn't know the difference. It has better, it has better um, <laughs> no. survivability. Okay. Like in the old days when we started fat grafting, we literally pull the fat out and just rinse it and throw it in a syringe and inject it. And, you know, you'd get like 20% of it that, that survived and 80% would go away. Well, we've gotten smarter and we know, okay, if you process the fat, you'll get a much better take. But the problem is, is when you process it, you get a lot less out. Yeah. So that therein lies right. the catch-22 with Brazilian butt lifts. You need a ton of fat. You what if somebody doesn't have enough fat? Then they end up getting over liposuction. That's another problem, right? A lot yeah. of people that want a bigger butt are not heavy people. And yeah. so they don't have a ton of fat, so they get over liposuction. I mean, I'm delving into like my Brazilian butt lifts. We so hate far. it. Hates it. I'm not a fan. Okay, <laughs> moving on to this law. So mandatory registration, increased fines for non-compliance. So in the past, if you were non-compliant with the Florida Department of Health, they would charge you 5,000 per day that you were non-compliant. Now it's 5,000 per procedure. So it's more potential fine money. Uh, liability coverage, this is the big one. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is huge. Doctors performing Brazilian butt lifts must carry liability malpractice insurance. So what we just talked about. What we just talked about in our last segment. This is really Good. big. Uh, I think this is fantastic. My only gripe about this is they said that the minimum coverage had to be 250,000. I think that's really low. Yeah. I think my malpractice is a million. Um, I think that for Brazilian butt lifts, which carry a much higher risk of death and other complications, it should be at least a million. So I'm a little bummed that the liability coverage is so low. Is that like, a, was that, I wonder if it was because like Florida is where all, most of the BBLs occur in the United States? I think that by far and away that Florida has to be the place where the most BBLs are performed. Like every yeah. time we turn around, somebody's like having problems from a BBL in Florida. Um, or maybe they just have the worst crappy doctors there. And I haven't really <laughs> seen, um, you know, I see a lot of plastic surgery problems um, because I take call at so many hospitals. Sometimes when people go to these places that are not as, I don't know, what's the right word? Uh, not as legit. Mm -hmm. And the surgeon may not, you know, have privileges at a hospital. So they'll say, oh, you have to go to the ER. And I don't see a ton of BBL patients here. And mm -hmm. I just don't think many BBLs are done here. I know that there's a couple guys in my town that are doing them, um, but I don't think they're doing a lot. Yeah. You know, just here and there. All right. Also, very important. We just talked about the fact that doctors have to have malpractice uh, insurance. Now, surgery centers or facilities that do BBLs likewise have to carry insurance, which blows my mind that they did. On top of a doctor, the surgeon. Yes. So on okay. top of the doctor, the surgery facility has to cover liability insurance. Nice. So I, I think that these laws are great. I mean, it's a step in the right direction. Um, there's a couple where I think it could have gone even further to protect patients, but at least it's a step in the right direction. And I think that you have to take a step back and say, why are lawmakers focusing on one particular surgery? Because it's dangerous. Because it's dangerous. We've been like saying this forever that there's this is the one standout surgery that has more problems. Mm -hmm. 
And I think people are finally starting to notice. And well, and it got so popular from, from celebrities yeah. wanting bigger butts and stuff. Yeah, the Kardashian effect. Yeah. Yeah, the Kardashian effect totally And even they're this. getting their, like, Yeah, apparently. they're kind of reversing it, right? Apparently. But yeah. they, they still look like they've got some stuff going on down yeah. there. <laughs> so I, I think this is huge. Uh, I think it's kind of like people are starting to take note that this is a little bit more dangerous mm -hmm. because we're having to make specific laws for it. You know, they're not making laws for, you know, run-of-the-mill plastic surgeries that have been popular forever, um, which, you know, they probably should. I mean, you know, uh, everyone should have malpractice insurance. I mean, I, the, the part where it says, you know, people with BBLs, I mean, it should be everyone that's doing surgery. Everyone should have malpractice insurance. For sure. Should, it would eliminate a lot of, you know, risks and stuff to patients. So, And it would right. eliminate, like, a lot of doctor, like... Like people that shouldn't be doing it, doing yeah, it. Yeah, it'll no, totally. it literally yeah. eliminate doctors that are. Yeah, you know, and bad. I, I did I did a little digging into the history of this, and they actually loosened a lot of the laws several decades ago. I mean, like many decades ago, because there weren't enough doctors. Yeah, that makes sense. And so they loosened the laws, but what it did is it allowed kind of like an overcorrection, where then things that that were bad were happening. Yeah, some slime it's balls crazy. to come out. Yeah. All right, I want to recap this one real quick because I think this is a pretty huge. Uh, new law that just came out in florida florida just made new laws specifically targeting doctors and surgeons who are doing brazilian butt lifts so why did they do that well people started to notice that there were a lot of deaths and complications coming from these patients getting brazilian butt lifts so what did they do they started making people register if they were doing brazilian butt lifts so they have to let the department of health for florida know that they're actually doing them they also increased the fines if they're not compliant with the rules. And then they mandated that both the doctor and the facility have to carry malpractice liability insurance. I think these are great things. I think it, in part, they didn't go far enough. Like there's not enough malpractice coverage as like a minimum, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. And I think it makes people take a step back and wonder why are they having to make laws against one particular surgery? And the answer is clear because people are having problems with this. So I'm very excited to see that uh, something we've been talking about a lot is starting to get a little traction that, hey, this might be a problem and we need to protect patients. Because at the end of the day, it's all about protecting patients and make sure that they don't have a bad complication or, or even a death. So good.